So, hello everyone, welcome back to Stranger Story, a platform where we share inspirational stories of the leaders of the world with all of you. And today we have a visionary who is a retired principal, also a curator and founder of TEDx Surrey, and also connected to Toastmasters from a long, long time. We have with us Alan Roberton. Thank you so much for coming to Stranger Story in collaboration with Pixar Society. Thank you very much. So, Alan, um, of course, uh, you're here to share about your professional and personal journey today. Uh, we will start the interview uh, with, the, with, with, the, with the same question that we have all the time, like w how was your childhood like and what were your aspirations when you were growing up? Well, I was born in England in 1943, so during the war, uh, quite a lot of turmoil for my family. We had to be, I was born in London, so we had to be evacuated from London to different parts of, of England and Scotland uh, for safety purposes. But I had a very, very happy uh, upbringing. My aspirations as a little one was, were to uh, play uh, football or soccer as it's called here for England. Ah. <laughs> it wasn't just for the team that I supported, which was West Ham United, but for, for England. So I was mad keen on sports and have been for the rest of my life, basically. So you still play sports? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm well beyond that now. I'm an old man now, but uh, um, I kept in touch with it. I was a marathon runner. I actually was able to do the, the ride to conquer cancer from... Cloverdale to Seattle over two days when I was on my 70th birthday, actually. Um, but I'm winding down now. <laughs> uh, so from a sports person to becoming the founder for the TEDx Surrey, what was the motivation be behind starting this? I had been introduced to TEDx through a friend who was running TEDx White Rock. And this was in 2017-18. Okay. Um, he asked me, he called me one day and said, this is what I'm doing, I'm going to be a licensee, would you like to be the curator uh, of a TEDx event? And I said to him, what's TEDx and what's oh. a curator? So <laughs> you had no idea? I had no idea. Oh. Uh, I knew him from Toastmasters. Um, so he said, why don't you check out the website? And I did, and I thought, you know what, this looks interesting. So I wasn't thinking then of being a licensee at all. But as the year went on and I went to see TEDx Stanley Park in Vancouver, uh, which was a huge event, over 2,000 people there. I thought to myself, you know, Surrey needs a TEDx. We don't have one. Yeah. Our population is close to 600,000. We can have a big one there. We need a, I love the idea of a bigger yeah. TEDx. So um, after the year of TEDx White Rock, um, that particular individual only wanted to keep it a small uh, event. Uh, that's when I decided with some friends to start TEDx at that time, Bear Creek Park. We weren't allowed to, yeah. to call it TEDx, sorry, to start with. Later we were able to change it to that. Yeah, and now it's the largest one in BC. The largest one in BC, probably one of the largest ones now across the country because some of the bigger ones like TEDx Toronto and TEDx Ottawa, TEDx Vancouver, um, along the way they kind of drop off. There's a lot of work involved. Yeah. And it becomes too much, I think, for Sometimes, the, the yeah. people who are the licensees yeah. of it, yes. Yeah, but then you have a team of volunteers and people working. So, I mean, I have personally attended the TEDx study last time. And I love the part that we had to do some bhangra. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? <laughs> was, I, was it not yes. TEDx? A speaking event. I mean, I was doing Bhangra and I loved it because it keeps you active and, yeah. you know, and that's just a way of showcasing the, uh, and bringing on the diversity and, and those things. So, yeah. So now next question would be uh, coming from a lot of people. It's not just me asking, but people keep asking how to become a TEDx speaker. Well, you really need to have a compelling idea, an idea that's going to shift people's thinking, make them look at their world and the greater world in perhaps a different way. 
Uh, most of the time, people who have an idea like that are very much involved with it. They're either experts in it, or they do it for a living, or it's something that's been a part of their lives for years and years. They just pull an idea out of the air and say, "Well, I'll use this idea." It's something that's that's really a part of them, I see. and they're sharing it with the audience. Um, so it's the idea more than the speaker. Some people say, "Well, I have it on my bucket list." Uh, okay, but then, um, but it needs to be authentic. It needs to be genuine. It needs to be something that's coming from you. That's going to help others. It's not about you. Yeah. It's about your audience. Yeah. So that's a takeaway from one of the takeaways from the video that if you want to become a TEDx speaker, then you you really need to in, be involved with the idea that you are bringing on the table and sharing that with the public, and that's actually going to help someone. Ah, oh, that's that's interesting because in this age uh, and time, maybe a youth coming up with an idea, lots of ideas they have, but what if they are not really involved? In they and they want to be involved with with certain idea, but they don't have the resources. So can they still be a TEDx speaker? Yes, I think you know you you can be. It's you need to be careful how you choose the TEDx event you go to. Uh, our TEDx event is one of probably. Um, 20% or so of all TEDx events in that we have we are open to any size of audience over a hundred most TEDx events keep within the hundred limitation okay. because you have to have extra qualifications to go beyond that to having a bigger audience oh, I see. so there may be a smaller event and and there are school events that take place I yeah. know that they yeah. they've happened in Surrey Absolutely. here so um, there's opportunities for students there we like to have and have over the last two years we've got a partnership with the Surrey School District um, where we have one student from the Surrey School District I'm not sure it's going to happen this year because we've got fewer students who are interested, but um, we, we love to have the young, fresh voices, that's for sure. Absolutely. And our people also need to be trained sometimes on public speaking because they might have an, a great idea, but they are really afraid of talking and sharing it at, ahead. So what are your few tips uh, for somebody listening, few public speaking tips from your site? Join Toastmasters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's, not bad. It's that simple, yeah. really. I mean, you need to have the opportunity to practice public speaking on a regular basis. And for most people, that's very difficult to do. If you join a Toastmasters club and it's a weekly meeting, you will practice your public speaking uh, skills on a weekly basis. Yeah. You'll have a chance to do speeches yourself. You'll have a chance to evaluate other people. You'll have a chance to be the chairman or some other role during the meeting but every week you will have the opportunity to grow and learn and the thing with a TEDx talk is generally we're looking at people who are comfortable and experienced certainly from TEDx Surrey's point yeah. of view of being in front of an audience of a hundred or more that's that's not a problem for them because we can't teach in three months how to be comfortable in front of an audience yeah. then people need to come with that yeah. we can teach people how to do a TEDx talk to the best of their ability. I see. So, I mean, you're more into helping people, bringing, uh, bringing them up to talk on stage and speak, and then Toastmasters could be one way out. Well, Toastmasters, I would say, is a stepping stone to that. Because if you think about it for a moment, Falak, you're looking at someone being on stage, where we have it at the Bell Performing Arts Centre, huge stage, on the round red rug, with all the lights on them. Yeah and eight or nine cameras taking different shots of them in front of a thousand people and everybody's looking at that one person. Yeah, exactly. So you need to be very comfortable in your yeah. own skin yeah. <laughs> if Absolutely. that's the case. Yeah. And now nowadays there is a difference between talking, I mean there are two different things. You're talking to an audience from the stage which is a direct di uh, dealing with audience and then you're also, you know, on the side, some people are just talking to the audience via their phones, like we are doing right now. So, I mean, of course, there should be a difference between the two ways, because digital content curation is also a thing. And now somebody can say, I'm a great speaker, like I can say, but I'm just talking to an audience which is not visible to me. So, I mean, is it like, is there any difference between these two? I believe there's a huge difference. Yeah. And for TEDx events around the world during the pandemic, we had to go to that online way yeah, of doing exactly. things. 
Um, but as soon as the pandemic was, was over and we could gather again, that's exactly what we did. The, the idea behind uh, a TEDx event is a locally organized event which happens with people there, so it's an in-person event. Uh, and you need to be successful as a speaker it's very difficult to do it without an audience. Yeah. In the two years we had to do it without an audience, the speakers did really well, but it was a struggle for them. Because with an audience, they, they give you feedback. They yeah. smile, they laugh, yeah. they, they applaud, they do different things. There's an energy there, and that energy allows it to sort of circle around. The speaker gets more energy, the audience gets more energy, and so on. So now you deal with a lot of audiences. Of course, you have to take care of things, and there is a huge event you have to manage. How do you take care of your mental health uh, in this changing scenarios? Because of course you have to keep yourself. Uh, you know, you need to learn everything with the changing world because that's this is now how it was long time back mm -hmm. when you started your career. So how do you take care of your mental health and you keep yourself, you know, uh, consistent with the changing world? Are you referring to my work with TEDx or just in general? Just term? in general now. Oh, okay. Well, I think um, if, I, if I quickly go to TEDx, it would be build a wonderful team around you that will make things um, that much easier. But also being on a journey with a team of people is so much, much more comfortable and enjoyable than being on your own. I think keeping um, fit and healthy is an extremely important part of... of uh, Maintaining mental health, um, you know, regular exercise, uh, watching your diet, having good sleep, all those things that we are preached to and told about are, are very invaluable. I mean, I'm 81 years old now and I've tried to keep in pretty good shape throughout my life. And I think it, it does pay off when you get into those later years. Uh, if you haven't bothered, it becomes a bit of a struggle. So. so what do you do when you wake up in the morning? The first thing, what do you do? Um, well, it depends. This time of the year, I get up and uh, I go for a walk in the park with my, my wife and the dog. Um, in the wintertime, I get up and I do yoga and then I meditate for a while. Wow. So you don't use your phone? No. <laughs> I don't use my phone. In fact, I'm a very reluctant phone user because of my vintage. I took very slowly to, uh, to the phone. Uh, when I go out, I do not take my phone with me, except when I come to something like this. But if I'm going out for a walk in the park, no, the phone does not come. And uh, when, you, when you're like waking up, the first thing is like you are just waking up. You're not taking your phone along or no. just checking what... what no, 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 no. Oh no. my, we, we need to learn this. Please <laughs> tell us how to do this. You just don't do it. <laughs> I, I mean, mean I, the thing is, I haven't done it in my life. I've never done it. Whereas for young people, it's completely different. Um, Probably you've always done that. It's just part of you. Um, but I would certainly recommend that it's something that you have times of the day when it is off limits. I do know uh, a good friend who meditates in the morning. And for her, the important thing is to get up, do not go to your phone, <laughs> go and start doing your meditation before you get to your phone. Because after you've been and, and you meditated, and then you go to your phone, you're in a different framework, different frame of mind. Right. So, um, okay. <laughs> okay. So from e every interview that I do, I don't know about the audience, what they learn, but I try to take at least one thing from the interview and s I start inculcating that in my own life. Okay. So from tomorrow, whenever I am waking up, I'll make sure that I don't m touch my phone. Otherwise, there's no point of interviewing a, <laughs> an experienced person and there's no point of learning. I mean, what am I learning out of this? So, okay. How so long I, would you do that for, though, in the morning? Oh. I mean, you could say, I didn't do it for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me. Tell me the time. I would say at least 15 minutes. If you can make it 30 minutes, then it's really, okay, you're going to have to find something completely different Distracting. To do. So, yes. I mean, whatever that may be. Um, okay, I'll distract myself. Maybe do some I'll yoga. Do, yeah. do something. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. For that, I also have to wake up on time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, okay, let's try that. So, yeah, that's one of the most important questions these days because of the fact that, you know, people are very sad, uh, timid, not talking to each other, not sharing their problems because mental health is an issue. Mm -hmm. And being a mental health advocate, I always try to ask um, about 
I always try to bring this topic on. Okay. So yes. yeah. So okay. Now moving on to the story part of stranger story. Um, what do you think? How can someone's story, life story, experiences, or journey can change someone else's life? Does this really impact? I mean, people keep asking me, would stranger story or I mean any story can really help someone else listening or reading to the stories? Have you experienced that in your life? Uh, yes, I have. I think for each of us, there are different people who can provide that learning. It could be a parent. It could be a sibling, it could be someone in your family, or it could be someone in your work. Who knows where it might be. But someone who impresses you with the way they deal with life. And I think it's a matter of watching them and figuring out and analyzing, if you like, what it is that they do that does impress you. And then try and in, in, inculcate that into your own life. Okay, so that's basically uh, witnessing someone's journey with your own eyes or listening or reading maybe mm -hmm. in different ways. Yes, that's yes. What you're saying, oh yes, right? for sure. Okay, so Alan, I asked you enough questions uh, and uh, I would keep the rest of the questions for the next interview. I would request the uh, viewers to comment below with all the questions that you have for Alan. And probably in the next video, we are going to ask them those same questions. But before we wind this up, we, uh, the last question that I have is, do you have any generic, anything that comes to your mind for the community? Big question. I think for all of us, we need to have some sense of, of purpose and direction in life. Um, if we don't have that, we can wander around aimlessly and feel as though life doesn't have any purpose and I'm, you're not going in any particular direction. So I think that there are times in li our lives when that does occur. We feel as though we're adrift. And those are the times when we have to dig deep, I think, and figure out what it is in our lives that is important to us, um, what we want to focus on, what is the real purpose for ourselves at that stage of our lives, in all sorts of different ways. Um, but just to have that waking up in the morning and thinking, okay, I've been blessed with another day. How am I going to use it with a sense of purpose and direction? Yeah, that's a really nice thought and something that we all should be thinking, like why we are born and what's the purpose mm -hmm. of our lives. Uh, I'll tell you just quickly, a uh, few, few years uh, back, I was doing the same. Ask, I would keep asking myself, like, what is the purpose of my... I finally found mine, uh, which I will be shared maybe sometime later not now but yeah and it's a very content feeling and it's not too big it's just related to being happier so if yes. you find your purpose of life you're more happier and you're content and just things doesn't affect you yes. i mean yes. um a negative comment from someone won't affect you mm. so i think that's that's what you're saying yes. and i did felt it and i'm on a path of it at at a young age i would say it usually takes people, you know, a lifetime to realize it, it this. They can do. They can do. Yeah. Yes. But then if, if you are also on that stage, you, you are lucky enough. So on that note, we'll wind up the interview. And thank you, Alan, for coming on uh, Stranger Story in collaboration with Thick Society. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. <laughs>